Welcome back to another episode of Spilling the Tea with Dr. T. And Gabriel D. That's me. And Lava Lee is taking a nap, but he will be back <laughs> at another future episode, so stay tuned. So today is just a couple of us, so we are going to be diving into another sexually health-related topic or sexual health-related topic. Specifically today, we're going to be discussing the correlation between oral sex and cancer of the mouth or the throat, which is kind of an unusual yeah. sort of pairing. For a lot of us, we wouldn't expect that oral sex would lead to any type mm -hmm. of cancer or any disease like that. But we're going to dive into it and how you can best protect yourself and make sure if you are enjoying oral sex that you are doing it as safely as possible. Another topic that we found in the comments, so thank you for your recommendation. And if you have any other recommendation, please keep it sending to us. Yes, the more the merrier. It always gives us good ideas on what we can reach out to you and educate you on. It also helps me to dig deeper into things yeah. that I might want to touch up on or learn more about. So let's dive into the correlation between oral sex and cancer. Let's start with the definition of oral sex. What is oral sex? So oral sex, as we've discussed before, involves using the mouth, the lips, the tongue to stimulate another person's genitalia. And that can be something we call cuntilingus, where you are stimulating the female genitalia, analingus, where you stimulate the anal area, as well as fellatio, where you're going to be stimulating the male genitalia. And so what is HPV? So HPV is known as the human papillomavirus, and this is a particular virus with many subsets. So there's over 200 types of this virus, and they are found pretty much everywhere you can imagine on our skin, on the external surfaces around us. What we are going to specifically be talking about is the various types that can affect us during oral sex. And so some will result in nothing. So your body won't respond by an HPV infection, or you can experience things like warts, or some of the highly aggressive types can cause things like cancer. And that's how these topics are related. So HPV is typically the culprit that can be responsible for causing oral cancer, as it is the most common sexually transmitted infection wow. on the globe. So very common infection, but there's some things to know about it. So we're going to get into details here shortly. So like you noted, they're invisible. Right. So they're pretty much invisible in the sense that you can't see them. And in many cases, your partner may be infected or you yourself may mm -hmm. be infected and have no signs or symptoms. And that is nothing to be a red flag for. Right. You're likely to be fine. Again, we're going to talk about that in more detail, but it is something to just be aware of. And you can take precautions to ensure you're not spreading it from yourself to others or allowing others to spread it to you. You said it was invisible. So what are the symptoms? So HPV infections typically do not result in any symptoms. Again, the virus does not necessarily cause cause any structural changes on your skin, nor does it give you any changes in your day-to-day -day feelings or body systems. What we do know is the majority of HPV types, once infecting an individual, your immune system is going to clear it out. But for some, you can experience things like warts, which is a projection of almost skin-like uh, tissue that wow. can kind of outpouch. Some of the most common, you would think of HPV type 1, which causes common warts on your fingers. Uh, other types could be more aggressive. And while they're not presenting with any structural changes that you can see, cellularly, they are creating these changes wow. that can result in cancer. So if your immune system is not able to clear those out, they can results in that worsening uh, and cancer symptoms. Wow, that's crazy. And while this is quite shocking, there is some good news we're going to get into later about how HPV is typically cleared by the immune system. What does that mean? Immune system clearance of HPV? Yeah, so in most cases, the body's immune system is going to clear HPV mm -hmm. out of your system before it causes any issues. So about 90% of wow. cases of HPV are actually cleared by the body before they result in any type of ward or any type of high-risk cancer. The body is fighting. Absolutely, especially <laughs> against HPV. That's good news. Yeah, and it's interesting that we think of this. Why would this be happening? And the reality is likely due to the fact that HPV is everywhere. There's right. so many types. Like, again, kids often get common mm. warts on their hands. That's a type of HPV. You can get HPV on your feet from just walking by a pool and get plantar wow. warts. So your body is knowing that this virus is everywhere. Right. So it's using that knowledge to best protect itself Mechanism by making defense. sure the immune system is ready to fight against it at any time. And how common is HPV in the United States? So according to recent data, approximately 43% of men in the United States and around 40% of women have a genital type of HPV. Wow. So again, there's so many different types. If we were to say how many mm -hmm. people in the United States have HPV in general, all 200 strains, I'm sure it'd be much closer to 100%. Wow. As our body, though, continues to fight it on a daily basis. In general, though, the, what we want to talk about here is genital HPV, mm -hmm. as that's often what's going to result in the spread orally, which can then cause oral cancer. HPV is everywhere. Yeah, and its high prevalence makes it more urgent for us to discuss the availability of things like vaccinations mm -hmm. or ways to prevent yourself from catching the infection if possible. And so can you define what is oral cancer? So oral cancer refers to any type of cancer that's going to develop in the mouth or the throat. This can include areas of the lips, the tongue, the upper 
uh, or soft palate, the hard palate, even up to the sinuses, as well as to the back of the throat and the pharynx. So any of these areas would be considered oral cancer. Wow, all these areas could be affected by cancer. That's right. Crazy. And the most common type of oral cancer is something called squamous cell carcinoma. So squamous cells are the very flat cells that line the majority of the mucosal membranes in our body. They're very durable, very protective, but these areas can eventually become inflamed. They can be infected by viruses and they can result in cancer if the proper precautions or lifestyle changes are not in place. And how common is oral cancer? So oral cancer accounts for a large percentage of the head and neck cancers, but annually only about 3% of newly diagnosed cancers in the United States are oral cancer. Mm -hmm. So we do know that it is important because it can make a big difference for someone who's diagnosed, but it's not the most common cancer in the United States. When looking at the numbers, you can consider there are about 55,000 new cases of oral cancer per year. So the wow. 3% sounds very low, but when you put it into perspective numbers. for people, it's a lot higher. What's the number one cancer in the US? The number one cancer is actually breast cancer. Wow. So not something that men typically have to worry about, but there are many cases of men having breast cancer. So that'll be for another topic <laughs> on another day. And what's unique about oral cancer is there's a dramatic reduction in the risk for this type of cancer by making lifestyle changes and by taking the right precautions. Wow. So in comparison with other cancers, there's a lot of things you can do to reduce your risk. Right. That's great news because you can prevent from getting cancer. Exactly. And how is HPV related to oral cancer? So HPV or the human papillomavirus is related to oral cancer because it can be a sexually transmitted infection. As we mentioned, it's the most common sexually transmitted infection globally. It can spread through oral sex to a partner's throat or to their mouth or to any area along the lining of their oral mucosa, especially strains like HPV 16 and some others. Those are at high risk for developing oral cancer. So you want to consider the fact that if you are proceeding with oral sex, that this is something on your mind and making sure that you're making it a low risk. Right that it can result in any type of cancer. Just be aware of the things that you can do to reduce your risk. Exactly. And so is oral sex risky in regard to oral cancer? While HPV can be transmitted through oral sex, it is extremely unlikely to result in oral cancer. Again, typically 90% of infections are cleared by your own immune system. So other things are gonna be more important here. Things like your natural immunity, things like your overall health and lifestyle factors, those are all gonna make a bigger impact in allowing your body to ensure you stay cancer free despite maybe being infected with HPV. And it's crucial to understand that just because you may have an HPV infection it does not guarantee you're gonna experience any type of symptoms of cancer, it just elevates your risk. So in regards to your own behavior, you wanna take a look and say, hey, is oral sex risky for me? What are my precautions that I'm taking? What have I done in advance? Who is this partner? And really assess it for yourself. But in general, it's very low risk that if you are infected with HPV from oral sex, it's gonna result in any type of cancer. Wow, that's great. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Less risk for cancer yes. is always a good thing. And what are some factors that worsen the risk for oral cancer? Tobacco use, including smoking and using chewing tobacco, is actually the number one risky behavior that can result in any type of head and neck cancer. Typically, between 70 and 80% of these cases of cancer are somehow related to tobacco use. And then if you add a confounding factor like HPV infection, that's going to further worsen your risk. So reducing tobacco use can dramatically reduce the risk of any type of head and neck cancer. Wow. Heavy alcohol consumption is also a big one. Not only does tobacco irritate the cells that are aligning your mm -hmm. oral mucosa, but alcohol is a very similar effect. We have found that clinical evidence shows continued alcohol use can also put you at an elevated risk. So cutting down alcohol use is going to make a dramatic reduction in your risk for oral cancers. And then finally, obesity. And it's not typically just the obesity that is the problem. The fact that obesity increases the risk for chronic inflammation mm -hmm. and hormone disturbances is actually the main cause of how it can increase your risk for developing any type of oral cancer. So when you look at all the risk factors together, HPV, to tobacco use, alcohol consumption, and obesity, there are three main things there that you can work yes. on to dramatically reduce your risk. And if all that's left is an HPV potential infection, you're still going to be at a much lower risk for developing any type of head and neck cancer. So again, you want to consider your risks and see what things you can do to avoid any type of uh, lead towards HPV related uh, oral cancers. I feel like at the end of every video, we always talk about lifestyle changes and how can they reduce your chances of getting any sort of disease yes absolutely it's major you know we definitely have these outlying factors at play viral infections yeah. exposure to toxic chemicals and substances but the lifestyle changes can make a dramatic impact and those are things you can do at home by yourself yeah. or with the support of a partner 
um, to make things a little bit less likely in regards to developing disease or cancer. Absolutely. Eat your veggies, your fruits, your vitamins, your minerals. Don't forget to drink water and you can live longer. Absolutely. And speaking of living longer, what is the best way that we can protect ourselves with oral sex? So the best way, of course, is to prevent HPV infection. And how we can do that is using a vaccination. Ah. So within the last maybe decade, maybe a little bit longer, there has been the release of the HPV vaccine. Initially, they were just covering, I believe, four various types of HPV, two which were high risk that could develop cancer, two which were low risk but could cause warts. Wow. Now the most up-to-date vaccine is called Gardasil 9. Mm -hmm. It covers nine strains of HPV. Many of these are high risk, which can result in cancer, and many are low risk, which can still result in genital warts, which can be quite daunting and devastating for patients if they experience those symptoms. So it's a really great vaccination. It's covered for the majority of young teens, but also adults. Between the ages, I believe, of 20 and 45, your insurance will cover this vaccine as recommended by the CDC's uh, guidelines on vaccination and preventing infections. So it's something to consider. You don't necessarily even need a prescription. You can go to your pharmacist wow. and ask them for the vaccine. They may ask you if mm -hmm. you are a good candidate based on your medical history. You, of course, want to talk to your doctor, but it can dramatically reduce the risk. And it's something that's available for the majority of us out there. That's great news. As a matter of fact, I just got the first shot of the Garnasil 9 yeah. a few weeks ago and it was not that bad. Yeah, and actually I had had two shots and I stopped and forgot to get my third shot. So I went and got my third shot uh, recently as well. And so um, there is a particular order and how you would get those vaccines, which I believe might be your next question. Yes. And how is the vaccine administered? Yeah, great question. So for adults having the vaccine, it's a little bit different than for teens. So you would go at initially day one, have the vaccine, come back in a month or two to get a second vaccine and then come back after six months to get your third vaccine. And that's to ensure you have high quality immunity developed to the virus making yourself protected for years to come. Easy enough. And why is the vaccine not recommended for older adults? So clinical evidence has shown us by the time we hit age 45, 99.9% .9 of people have been exposed to HPV already. So their body has already created some form of immunity to the virus in some capacity. And so of course, anytime you do a vaccine, you want to consider the risks versus the benefits. And by the time you reach 45 and beyond, the risks for having the vaccine start to outweigh the benefits. Mm -hmm. So it's not that you're not allowed because right. they want to exclude you. It's just that you probably already have immunity to the virus. And so it's unnecessary for you to get a vaccine. And where can someone get vaccinated? We went to a local pharmacy. You can go to any pharmacy. Most of them have the vaccine. They may have to order it ahead of time. So if you want to go and talk to them and see what that mm. process looks like, you could, of course, also talk to your primary care doctor, as I would recommend this is the first step to make sure yes. you're a good candidate for the vaccine. If you do decide to go to a pharmacy, there may be an administrative charge to do the vaccine. So you want to also make sure because your insurance may cover the actual medicine but not the administration charge. Mm -hmm. So ask about those little details. They do matter, especially if you're looking to save money. You can even consider going to your local health department as they have it there as well. That's incredible. Yeah, and so the high availability of the vaccine makes it a great choice for the majority of us out there. If you have further questions about HPV or the Gardasil vaccine, leave them in the comments below. We are happy to address those or any other sexual health related topics. That's what we're here to do. We hope you enjoyed this video. Yes, thank you for all the information. Now yeah. I feel like people are more aware of HPV, oral cancer, and vaccines. Yeah. So they can get protected and vaccinated. Exactly. And it's not something to be super scared of. It's just to know that it's out there know how you can best protect yourself yes. like anything else but we hope you will tune in for our next video if next week if you haven't already please like subscribe share, share post. comment all those things so we can continue to build this community and educate others and you guys can continue to educate us by leaving those comments below we look forward to seeing you next time yes. until then bye thank you for watching bye fellatio cunnilingus analingus analingus cunnilingus fellatio fellatio cunnilingus and analingus you got it <laughs>